Well, good afternoon. How are you doing this fine Friday afternoon? Today we've got a very special Google Digital Garage webinar for you because we're delighted to be delivering a session on digital marketing strategy um, in partnership with our friends at Wenta. So if you're joining us from Wenta today, um, it's our delight to have you with us. Thank you so much for doing so. So my name's Christine and I shall be your Google Digital Garage coach for uh, the afternoon. Um, so what's the Google Digital Garage? Google Digital Garage is Google's free skills training program. And I'm um, lucky enough to be one of the trainers. I am a marketeer by trade. I've been involved in the project since 2015. Um, and yeah, it's all about helping um, whoever you are, helping you out with your digital skills. Alongside me today, I have another one of our really experienced coaches in Francois. You can see Fran is in the chat right now. Um, Fran is there to, well, he's to keep everything running. He's going to answer your questions as you ask them. He's going to maybe ask you some questions. He'll be dropping you some helpful links. Um, best thing to do is go and say hi to him. So pop into the chat. If you're not browsing signed in at the moment, so you need to be signed into your YouTube account to get involved in the chat, which I really hope you do. So sign up or sign in to YouTube up on the right hand side there. And let Francois know who you are and why you joined us today. And maybe a little bit if you're in business, tell us a little bit about your business too. Um, you can tell you're speaking to Francois and he's the moderator. He's got a little uh, spanner next to his name that shows he's the one in charge. Um, any trouble viewing the webinar as we go through, then uh, super simple, just best thing to do is to try refreshing this page, turn it off, turn it back on again, and I'm sure you will catch right up with us. As I say, we have that instant chat live. Ask questions as we go, and Fran will answer them, but what we'll also do is we'll pause throughout the session. He's going to send me some of the questions over, ones that he think would be really good for the whole group to hear. So jump in and get involved with that. Um, we've got captions running for you today. So if you hit the CC, if you would like those captions available, then you can get that done. Um, and also, if you are interested, you can. there's a lot of information coming at you over the next 55 minutes or so. So we're going to keep this webinar live for you till about lunchtime tomorrow. Um, so my strong suggestion is you watch through with me, take notes as we go. If there's anything you think, aha, that's what I need, then just jot down the time code. Jot down the time code. You'll use the link that you use to get to me already to come on back anytime before about lunchtime tomorrow and you'll be able to rewatch, fast forward to the sections that are going to make sense to you. Um, if you want to know about our Google Digital Garage virtual training, we're running a broad offering of courses. So head to the description, um, click on through to our website and you can see what else we have to offer. We have face-to-face -face events coming up. So it's worth checking those in-person events as well to see if there's anything coming up around in your area. OK, I think that's all the housekeeping we need to do. So let's take a look at what we'll be talking about today. So those of you who's joined us before, then you'll know that we tend to break our, biz, our sessions down into three different sections. So we're going to talk a little bit and make sure we've got a common understanding about what we mean when we say digital marketing. Then we're going to look at some of the different channels you can use to do your digital marketing. And a channel is just a word we're going to use for one of the different methods that you might want to use to reach your customer base. And then we'll look at pulling that all together into a digital marketing plan. I'm going to give you a simple step by step um, guide uh, where you can fill in all the information for yourself and pull together your own digital marketing um, plan around the framework that I'll be able to give you. Now, I mentioned we've got different things on our website. We've got webinars you can join. We have got face to face events coming up. We've got online training courses. What we also have, and this is especially for those um, smaller businesses and charities. And when I say small business, some people think, oh, what, am I even a small business? This can be your side hustle. This might be your kitchen table business. Um, a micro business, if it's just you part time doing your thing, you are absolutely welcome to take advantage of these one to one sessions. Um, and if you're based in the UK, small business or a charity, head over to g.co forward slash UK mentoring and sign up for a free one to one session with one of our Google Digital Garage mentors. And um, we would love to have you with us. All right, then. 
let's talk digital marketing. And at any point when I'm asking you a question, one of these questions, why not um, let me know uh, what you think, what your um, answer. So here's a question for you. What opportunities might you get from being online? Have a think, you know, what kind of business? We've got people joining us from all over the world today. Um, we've got Lisa, who's planning to start up business for a therapy business. Amazing. Um, so you've got to be based in London and you start, you're thinking now for starting it next year. Fantastic. What opportunities might you get, Lisa, from being online? Um, we've got Morit from Havant on the south coast of England. We've got Fiona in from Singapore. Sam, who's joining in from Uganda. And we've also got Jayco from the Philippines. Amazing. So wherever we are in the world, and actually, just by us having this conversation today, you know, one of the benefits of being off online is that you can reach people all over the globe. Maybe that's something that's going to be. But as Lisa says, Lisa's is a therapy business based in London. It's not just about reaching people globally. It's maybe about re re reaching people locally as well. So have a think about you. Um... Talk to me about what opportunities you're looking to get from being online. Because the point, I guess, of all of this is that we live in an online world. Our lives are seamlessly interconnected by the magic of the internet. And more so than just being online, one of the things that's really driven this, as I say, I've been involved in the Google Digital Garage for coming on seven years now. And actually, one of the changes that I've seen over that period of time is just how much more connected we are. If you think about these things, mobile phones, it's mobile phones and the technology um, and the connectivity, you know, super fast broadband. And um, I live in Manchester and you can get broadband on the tram. You know, we live in a mobile world. In the UK, 80 percent of people buy things online. Um, there are billions of smartphones in use, which means we can buy along, the, buy online as we go about our day. As I say, I can be sitting on the tram and, and, and shopping all those Black Friday deals. We don't have to be sitting in front of a computer anymore. Um, and across the world, 60% of searches are now done on mobile devices. So that means when people are out and about, there's something about search, especially search on mobile, that has a really... Um, a real immediacy to it. So I land in a new town, which I do fortunately getting out back and around. First thing I'm going to want to do is find a nice coffee place. But I want good coffee. I don't necessarily want a chain store coffee. So I'll grab my mobile and I'll go and I'll look for that local knowledge and get online. So I've mentioned it already. As I say, we've got people joining us from all over the globe today. Um, Jackie's joining us from Mexico um, as well. So we can reach people globally. From where I'm sitting in my um, office studio in Manchester, I can reach out to people all over um, the globe. And that's what businesses can do. But also really importantly, and I think if, any, if the last two and a half, three years have told us anything, it's actually about the power of reaching people locally as well. We can be found for having the best coffee in the area by somebody new coming in. We can tell our story about how our goods are handmade locally by real people. Whatever it is that we've got about our business, we can reach those people wherever they are and however they best want to be found. And we really can learn about our customers and about our business and what we do that they like and how we can tell our story better. Um, we've got a couple of screenshots here, which are just some examples. One first screenshot is from Google Analytics. It's taking a bit of a look at the age and gender of uh, the particular customer base vis visiting this website. And then alongside that, we've got very similar um, information presented in a different way, which is one of those things about um, sometimes the way data is presented. Everybody presents it a little bit differently. But there we've got, we can find out some demographic information about people. We can find geographic information about the people visiting us. We can find out what they like, what content seems to get them all abuzz. So we can help to understand our customers more, which can help us to be more relevant to the people who we are connecting with. And we can absolutely, a business that's online is much 
um, has so many tools to help them in their communication, to tell their story, to reach and support the people who are interested in what they have got to say. So here we've got some great ones, you know, different ways you can support. It's going to depend on where your customers are and how they want to connect with you. You know, we can look at reviews. We can look at having um, messaging services. We can get on involved in social media. Lots and lots of ways that we can be there when our customers want us to be there. So hopefully that's a kind of a bit of an idea. I'm going to just pause very quickly. I don't think I've said anything controversial at the minute, um, but let's have a look. Oh, great. So we've got some definite. Um, we've got great people telling us what they're looking to achieve. So Lisa wants to get people aware of the business. It's a really good goal for a, a social media strategy. Uh, sorry, a, a digital marketing strategy, if ever I heard one, Lisa. Um, and we've got Delight Grace, who wants to partner with um, the world's top companies as a preferred 3D service provider. Wow, that's amazing. So if you're looking for those 3D um, uh, products, if you're looking to go and get those amazing billboards that we've seen in the last week or so in 3D, maybe that Delight Grace is going to be the person for you. Amazing. All right. So. We've got some the questions coming in at the minute are fairly general. So Rehan wants to know about the strategy for a digital marketing agency. Um, hopefully what we're going to talk about in the next couple of sections is really going to help you with that. Um, and we've got Ilya, who's looking to um, get more knowledge in marketing to find a job. Amazing. Ilya, if you want to check out some of our other webinars as well. Also, it's worth maybe joining our um, webinars around career goals. Um, and, and, and really do. We've got some uh, special webinars that are there to help people when they are looking for work. You might even want to look at some of our study options where you can do certificates based in digital marketing as well. All right. Fabulous. Let's keep on going then because we've got so much to talk about now. We're going to be thinking now about um, digital marketing channels. So these are some, I wouldn't say they were all, but they are some of the different ways that you as a business might want to reach those customers. So some of the things we're going to talk about today. First up, we're going to talk about search. Um, search has been and continues to be a really interesting way for businesses to reach their customers when the customer is looking for a business or a service like those. So we'll look at search engine optimization, natural search, SEO, Organic, you might have heard some of those terms. We'll also take a little bit of a look at search engine marketing, which is using search ads. We'll then take a bit of a look at social media marketing. We'll take a look at display marketing and maybe some email. I started an email, so I think it's still original and best as far as I'm concerned. Done well, done right. And we'll take a bit of a thought about the, the common thread that runs through all of these things is actually content marketing. So we'll take um, a little bit of a look at some of these channels in a bit more depth. So search marketing. Search is all about um, if somebody is looking for a business or service, for some products that you sell. If you are a good answer to the questions that they are asking, it's about making sure that you are found for when people are looking for a business or a service or a, co a company like yours. Okay, so you've probably seen something that looks a little bit like this before. We've taken this from Google. This is the search engines results page or the SERP as some people insist on shortening it to. So in your search engine results page, as I say, um, this is, you know, um, how it looks. You've, as I say, you've, you've probably seen this a hundred times. And actually, some people look at this and go, oh, yes, we know about that. We know about that. But it's really important and interesting to break it down. So from now on, when you are searching, you're not just searching. You're not just shopping. You're actually researching. All right. Because you might not have noticed because the search engine results page is designed not to be lingered on. The search engine results page is designed to get you as the searcher to the answers that are right for you as quickly as possible. So here we've got the best compact camera for travel. That's the question being asked. What's the best compact camera for travel? OK, and that is in yellow there at the top. That's our search query. The question. Think about queries, questions. Think about questions that you might be a great answer for. 
because best compact camera for travel has a kind of sounds like it might have the intent behind it that somebody's actually looking to buy a robust compact camera to take traveling with them the next thing we see are some shopping ads all right and they're saying as sponsored so it's very clear that they are um ads there but so what you not quite often get is you'll get some idea some ads will appear towards the top of the page here they're shopping ads if i had put best coffee near me i probably wouldn't have got shopping ads i would have got a map with pins in it that showed a good answer to my question because the search engine results page changes depending on what it is you are looking for and then below that Anything that's an ad is clearly marked. Here we've got sponsored. These have a little box by them that says the word ad. Below that, we have our natural or our organic search results. Okay. The ads are paid for the um, organic search listings. Whilst not free, I don't like the word free. I never use the word free because it's they, somebody somewhere has taken time and somebody has taken effort and energy to learn and to improve and to tinker with and to really get to know what their customers want in order to be found there. All right. So those organic listings are what we're going to take a look at first. So search engine optimization. This is all about if I have a website, how do I get myself listed and found in the search engine? We'll take Google as an example. When um, Somebody is searching for the right thing for me. And you remember when I said the search engine changes because it wants to be a really, it wants to find the best answers for the question. Okay. I'm going to tell you right now, there are no tricks that are going to get you here. All right. The only way to get found consistently is to be a really good answer to the questions that are being asked. So first things first, you're going to do some research and work out what are people asking that you you are going to be a good answer for? And being that kind of honest, authentic, genuine, then we need to make our content well-written and interesting. Then we need to make sure our website is neat and tidy and findable. When it comes to being findable, there are some tools that can help you. So the first tool I want to share with you today is the Google Search Console. Now, Search Console is an amazing tool that if you have a website, if you don't have Google Search Console listed yet, my first action point for you to take away is to go away and link in Search Console to your website. It will help you to understand your website and how it performs in search, what people are interested in, what search terms you are already findable for. You can also flip that around and think, oh, I'm not being found for things I probably should be found for. How do I then improve my content so it is findable? And then how do I make my website really easy to navigate? I can submit a sitemap to Google so they know where everything on my website is. I can also, if I put new content up there, go, hello, hello, here I am. Come back and find me. So it's about being the, the Google Search Console will help you to get that great content understood and listed onto Search Console. There on, on this side where it says help Google and users understand your content. This is the sort of thing. This is this is what people think about when they're doing SEO. All right. When they're optimizing their website, they're talking about page titles, they're talking about headers, they're talking about doing snippets of things, tags, meta tags and picture tags and all these things. What you're actually doing is you're making it super organized and make it really easy to be a match. So if somebody asks the question, like we had, best compact camera for travel, if you had an article that said how to choose a compact camera for traveling, then that's a, an article that matches what that person searched for. You then have lots of content that talks about what they're looking for that's then interesting to them. That's what's going to get you noticed. That's what's going to keep you good, relevant, interesting content. So you'll have heard, you might have heard, if you've heard anything about SEO and search engine marketing, you might have heard, oh, sorry, search engine optimization, you might have heard of keywords. All right. A keyword 
is the word or phrase that somebody types in to the search engine. So by knowing the questions people are asking, you can use the words they're using to match the content in your website. OK, and then you write good quality, genuine, useful content that matches what they're looking for. Some people think, oh, a keyword means that I have to repeat that word again and again and again and again in my content. That's how it's going to be found. But if that content isn't useful and interesting to the human, then you're not, it's not going to stick around in the search engine. So make sure what you are doing is producing useful, innovative, high quality, interesting content that uses those words and understands that the user is looking for these sorts of things. These are the questions that are asking. That's your keyword research. And this is the answers that are going to be useful and interesting and informative for them okay and then you make your web pages search friendly by using things like the google search console by making sure your content is well titled good headers that match the content that's being shown and that's it's not an easy thing to do it's something that takes rigor and discipline and it takes um one of the things the search engines seem to like is, is content that is kept fresh and updated. Um, you know, writing interesting things, responding to, using synonyms, not just using the words themselves, but what other words might people use for that? Really knowing and understanding your customer is your absolute top tip for trying to be found on search. Now, we've mentioned local a couple of times, and local is one of those areas that's really, really important for human beings. I want to know where the nearest good coffee to me is. I want to know where a plumber who's local to me is. If I search for a plumber, I don't want one based in London or based on the other side of the globe. I want where I am. This is a Manchester based plumber who can come to me and has, you know, um, is going to be able to fix what I've got. We've always searched locally. In the past, we used to, used to get the phone book and the yellow pages used to come through the door. Um, there are different uh, directories. You know, if I was in the hospitality business, I'd want to be on TripAdvisor. Um, I might want to be on Trusted People or Bing or Yell, which is the um, what Yellow Pages became. There's also an amazing tool, which we've got the logo here for, which for being found locally in search, and it's called the Google Business Profile. It used to be called Google My Business, so you might have heard of it already. And what this does is it allows businesses to take control of a little portion of the search engine results and tell the world's biggest search engine all about your business. So if you are a business that has any kind of local intent, if you've got a premises you want to get a pin on the map and bring people to, or maybe you're somebody like a plumber who has a, an area, you don't want people knocking at your door, but you want to go out to people in a certain area. You can use the Google business profile to show people you're active, when you're active, what services you offer, what products you sell. You can combine it with your um, point of sale system and show the products you have in stock at, online at any point. So it's a really interesting tool. We do have a couple of webinars out that are also going to help you on this. Um, primarily, there's one called Find Customers with Google Maps. If you want to do that, if you want to get more found on um, locally, then find customers with Google Maps is a great one for you. There are also some shorter webinars, some kind of power webinars that we have. And they're um, all around, they'll say they're with either with Google search, Google search and maps, um, they're going to help you. We also do when we cover it in um, get your business visible on Google. That's another one where we talk about the Google business profile in quite a bit more detail. Okay. So I've mentioned search as, as a whole. We've talked about organic search, but then we've also got ads, search engine marketing, using the search engines to be found and then boosting that with ads. So if it's pure search, then you can have a pay-per-click model. That means that you can research the words that people are going to be found and you can bid to for your content to be found by those words. It is an auction and it's not just about who's got the, the biggest budget wins. All right. Um, you can only, it says here, you can get onto the first page straight away. If you are good, 
good, interesting content that is well written, well researched, matches the questions being asked. Once you've done all that and you still want to uh, do more, find more people, then it might be worth boosting that all with ads. Um, I would always do the stuff, and it says, it says the search listings are free, the things that are um, not going to cost you for each click. Um, and you can get onto and also off the first pages straight away with the ads. So they can be really flexible. Right now, people are running their Black Friday campaigns and they're running their um, run up to Christmas campaigns. Their campaigns might turn off. If I was running ads and I had a four day shipping period, I'm going to turn them off the, the week before Christmas because it's people aren't going to be able to get those products in time for Christmas itself. Or I might turn them back on again for Boxing Day. I might turn them back on again with a different message come January the 1st. So the ads are really highly um, flexible and agile, actually. Getting started with search engine marketing, the first thing to do is to know your customer, do the optimization work. But then you want to think about the, the tool we're going to use is Google Ads. You can, it's really intuitive to use. You link it to your website, you link it to your analytics account so you can see what the traffic's going. Um, you can, there's a tool that when you log into Google Ads, it will walk you through creating different kinds of ads for different kinds of objectives. So if your objectives are sales, they'll be slightly structured differently to if your objectives are traffic to differently if your tra objectives are to get leads through. So work through, we do have um, a webinar on getting started with digital advertising. So if you're interested in that, do join us for that one as well. <coughs> but having nice, tightly grouped um, keyword listings for your ads is really important. Um, you can use what we call extensions. So extensions are um, a great way to take over more of the real estate of the ad of, of the search engine results page by having things like uh, links to the contact us page, links to your delivery information. You can, so if you are ever using um, Google ads, there are lots of optional things that you can do. I would be trying to fill as many of those things up as you can, because the more information you give the system, especially with the new Performance Max ads, the more information you can give it, the more likely you are to um, give it the information that it is, is going to be useful to it. Um, and make sure you do connect in your analytics account. So you're not just sending clicks to your website. You're really seeing and learning what happens once those clicks get there. OK, next one, a bit different. Some things that we maybe don't instantly think about. Most of us have seen search engine ads. But have you ever seen display ads? Do you know what display ads are? Um, even if you don't know what they are, I bet you you've seen them because display ads are a bit like um, online billboards. OK, so if you think about it with a billboard, you're walking around a town and you might see some outdoor advertising, a billboard on a bus stop or on a, um, a round and about. And on that billboard, a big poster, somebody is hoping that the business is hoping that some of the people who might be their customer walk past the billboard every day, that some of them will notice it, that some of them will take action based on it. And that's a bit what display ads are, but display ads are a lot cleverer because they, you're putting ads on other people's websites, but you can use the visual creativity of the billboard ad, but really tailor it to the people who are going to walk past. So display ads, when they first started, they were probably called banner ads. You might have seen them. Lots of things like this. Display ads work really well if you've got great visuals. OK, and they're a lot easier to do than people think. Um, lots of different types of display ad. The ones that do work best are visual ones. These ones are different ways they can be targeted. You can either target the content on the page of the website. So if somebody's reading about buying a house, you might have your ads for your mortgages around it or something. If somebody was then goes and looks at a different website, maybe those ads are going to follow them around. OK, um, display advertising is a lot easier than it, it sounds. Um, it's also built in Google Ads. 
Um, and actually, when you select the kind of objectives you have, display is really good for getting the word out there. It's good at the top of the sales funnel when people don't know who you are. So to raise brand awareness, it's also good at the bottom of the sales funnel when maybe somebody's put that pair, put those that item in the basket and then kind of forgotten about it. So you, that's called retargeting that if you've ever seen once you've visited a website, you get reminded about the things you've left in the basket. And that's called retargeting. Those images follow you around. OK, so different ways of targeting, lots of different ways of, um, you know, finding those right customers for you. Um, you can choose it by the different websites it goes on or target the people who have shown an interest in you before. Um, using the Performance Max campaigns as well, which is um, quite a new feature, you can actually um, get the Google ads, uh, ads platform to choose where to put your ads and trust in the machine learning in order to fulfill the objectives that you set. So it's really interesting to get involved with. Like all digital marketing, you need to understand your customers and what they want. OK, so um, that's that's the bit nobody else can do for you. Understanding your customers, you write good quality ads, you use images that they're going to that are going to ap appeal to them. Remarketing is when you, if somebody's left something in your basket or has visited your website, you can do remarket to them so they come back to see you. And like anything, it's a case of testing and optimizing. What I would say, though, now, um, more recent developments with the machine learning, the smart campaigns, things like the performance max within Google Ads, do make that testing, that optimization. You can hand over responsibility to, of, for that to the machine learning to the artificial intelligence and lots of people are finding some really good results with that. Now social media is where loads of people spend their time online. So for a, a lot of businesses it's a great way to connect with their customers where they are. Different things, different businesses go to social media for different reasons. There might want to be a pure sales angle to it. Get the word out there about your promotions, your offers, your deals. It might be about adding value to your brand, improving your customer service, responding to reviews, being there to message and how to's and get involved that way. And you can use it to understand your customers better. So improving your marketing, learning more about what they like, delivering them more of what they want to see from you. Two types of social media, your organic social media, where the only cost to you is the cost of writing the post, thinking up something interesting to say and posting it out. But normally the reach isn't very far with that. OK, so without paying for ads, you're only ever going to reach people who will apportion of the people who already know about you and maybe a few of their friends and family and followers too, okay? Paid social media, which we also cover along with display in our Get Started with Digital Advertising webinar. When you start to pay for your posts, um, you can pay based on the number of views, the number of actions, the number of clicks, that sort of thing, different across different platforms. Um, and it says you can reach anyone, as in it means that people don't already have to know about you. You can only reach people who are already on the platform that you're trying to use. So one of the key things that you're going to think about is which platform you would use. We've got two webinars at least that deal with social media. You've got um, writing for social media and we have also got uh, social media strategy. So they're a great, if you think social media might be the thing for you, you can get involved with them. It's about identifying who you're speaking to. It's about which social media platforms they use. Um, and it's about them being interesting, posting content. Do they like blogs, do they like videos? Do they like how to's on YouTube? Don't forget YouTube is a social media platform as well, which people quite often do overlook. Um, think about your audience. Think about why you are a great answer to the questions they're asking. It's the exact same thing, just a slightly different method. Great thing about social media is you can go to them where they are. If they're spending their time scrolling on one of the social media platforms, it's about getting that thumb to stop. Um, when you're setting social media marketing goals, as I say, we we run two or, or, or more other webinars all about social media. So if it's if it's what you think might be right for you, then great to jump in and see on that. It's about 
working out what you want to get out of it. Um, it's quite hard to be, you know, to, to go straight from nobody knows you to somebody's bought from you. So think about whether it's increasing your brand awareness, getting more people know about you, know people to understand who you are, learn about other people, you know, learn about the customers might be one of your goals. Really understand that audience and then give it a good go. Be consistent, make regular updates, be interesting. It comes always back to that content um, in order to, um, to, to, to build a steady, loyal following. OK, you can't do it. You can't nibble around the edges at this. But by the same token, don't try and spread yourself too thinly. My top tip, actually, for social media is don't try to do too many platforms at once. But join us for our social media marketing sessions um, and, and writing for social media if you want to learn more about everything we can do social media wise. Then, as I say, I still think of email as the original and best. And really interesting, when I'm saying this, what I genuinely think email marketing is a fantastic way to deepen relationships with people who already know about you. Because with email marketing, email marketing isn't about spam. It isn't about email blasts and just sending as many messages out to as many people as possible. To do email marketing, um, Legally, somebody has had to have trusted you enough to give you their details and permission to use them. OK, so if somebody has given you that trust, they've already they know you quite well or they feel like they're going to get something from this relationship. You're actually a lot further along the line than just shouting at random people on social media. So if people are opted in to hear from you then it gives you the opportunity to communicate on a big scale. But to the individual receiving that email, it should really feel like pretty much a one to one um, situation. We all know that a newsletter goes to lots of people. But if I'm receiving an email, I absolutely want it to be something that's going to be that, something that makes me want to read it, interesting enough, something that knows who I am and tailors itself to what I need. So getting started with email marketing, it's all about knowing who you're trying to reach. It's about keeping a legal compliant list of what the names are, um, you know, details you need to know about them. Um, really important when we're talking about the list of relevant contacts, only collect information that you have a need for and you have to look after that information. All right. Um, some of the platforms, things like MailChimp, they're again being around an awfully long time. MailChimp and the other platforms are like it. Um, a lot of platforms are what they call freemium. Same with a lot of tools. They start as a, a free version and then you can add um, paid features on top. But one of the things that a good platform, when you're looking to choose a platform for you, make sure it's helping you stay compliant, helping your list stay compliant. Um, handling unsubscriptions is as, as, as important, if not more important, than getting those email addresses in there in the first place. And then I love this, treat your views as like VIPs. I hate it when you get an offer that's only for new customers. What about my loyal customers? Make sure that you are really, you've. there's an old saying in, in business, business truism, that it costs an awful lot more to get a new customer than it does to keep an old customer. So think about what you can do to look after, nurture, get those repeat sales, get people who like you to follow you on your social media channels, get them, ask them to recommend you on to somebody else. So think about how using this really exclusive one-to-one -one channel as um, that idea for people in like VIPs. Segmentation is about, if you think about chopping open an orange, you've got the different segments in there. Segmentation is about identifying any homogenous groups within your um, customer base and treating them as different. So for example, you might be very easily, if you have an online store, to see who has signed up for your email newsletter to get that initial discount. And you might be able to segment your list based on who's bought from you in the past and who's never bought from you. You might also then look at who your repeat people are. They might be promoted to like your super fans. Somebody who's bought from you once, 
how do we pr persuade them to buy again? That's a different email to someone who've never bought from you, persuading to try you for the first time. Okay, so don't just spend, send one long email to everybody. Think how you can make it as useful as possible to a smaller group of your database. Imagine that if you're receiving this email, flip it on its head. It's not what I want to tell you as a business. It's not what my business wants to tell you. It's what you as a customer would want to receive. And see how that changes how you write your email. Make sure you test the device, test the sending it, check it on different devices. The platforms nowadays will help you to do this, but I will always send a test email to myself to see what it looks like. And then make sure you're optimizing the campaigns you might want to start running experiments. Does it get better when I open, when I send it? At, if I get an email at five to five on a Friday as I'm leaving the office, it might well not get opened. Then by the time Monday morning comes around, it's it's gone way down the list. So think about the timing of when you send things. And, and there's no right or wrong. People will say to me, when's the best time? It's going to depend on you and your business and your customer base. But think about those people as human beings. All right. And content marketing is probably the hardest of all because it's thinking up interesting things to say. It's organizing as part of your marketing strategy, getting the information, right time, right place, right kind of information to those customers or potential customers in a way that they are going to find of use, going to find of interest. Different kinds of content marketing we've talked about, you know, it's about telling your story in the different ways, whether that's through video, through the written word, coming up with case studies, testimonials, guides, how-tos. Go on to a YouTube and how-to is one of the most searched terms. People want to understand how things are going on. So think about how you can create different kinds of, tell your story in a way not maybe that's the easiest for you to create. It might be really easy for me to create a technical manual. But actually, what does my customer want to see? What does my customer need? All right. And then you start to think, I mean, we, there's a lot. There's so much to think about with content marketing. We're meant talking about example customer profiles, personal personas. You might have heard of them as pen portraits. We go into a lot of depth during our writing for social media webinar on content and on how to actually go about creating, how to create the persona, how to think about the customer. Customer journey map is about saying, right, what people who don't know about me yet are going to have different information needs to people who've already bought from me. So I'm going to map out that journey and I'm going to use my content to give people the information they need to move on to that next stage each time. And really understand how to tell your story in a format that people are going to understand it. That's the key to content marketing. Because if you've got a real focus on the people who are consuming your messages, reading your content, viewing your content, it's much easier then to decide what needs to be said. All right. So as I say, we go into a lot of depth on that on some of our other webinars. And actually, that's kind of the key for everything we've spoken about so far. We do have lots more sources of information for you. Um, and actually, although it comes in our tips for success for content marketing, the real key thing for all of this, I think, is measure your performance and optimize it. OK, you're not going to get it right first time. It's going to be a trial and error process. And do you know what? Then the market will go and change or something new will come out there. So it, this isn't a one time deal. It's all about um, always learning, keeping on top of, 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 of the ideas and trying something and see what happens, see whether it works for you. I'm very going to quickly going to just jump in and see um what Fran's got from me. Wow. So we've got tons of questions coming in. Um, okay. Quick question from Martin. Can you work in digital marketing without having a university degree? Yes, absolutely you can. Digital marketing is much more about um, very few people working in digital marketing. It's not been going that long. So not everybody has um a start in it. Not everybody has a degree in it. Um, there are qualifications you can get using your own oomph. So yeah, check out the Google Digital Garage. Check out tons of learning resources out there. Absolutely, you can, Martin. Um, and then, how can you prevent your email mark email marketing emails being marked as spam? That's a great question, Sam. 
One is to not send too many, to be reputable with your list. Don't be too um, salesy, actually. Be very genuine. I tend not to use maybe as much in the way of uh, very salesy headlines. You know, if you're going to do um, email marketing, don't send from, use one of the tools, a, a platform like MailChimp or um, Active Campaign or what have you. Those tools are designed to help you get those things right. Um, don't try and send too many. Don't send to all. Don't just put people in blind copy and send them from your own email um, department. Make sure you've got all the certificates that you're uh, that, that on your website and things, because if you're linking through to your website, you want to make sure all of that. Um, but yeah, I would definitely um, keep your images and your links, you know, to a minimum as you're building up your reputation. Um, and, and make sure anything you do put out is of interest to the people to stop them from marking it as spam. Okay, brilliant. Right. Sorry, I know we've got tons coming in. And I can see that Fran is answering loads of questions. His little fingers will be on fire, which is brilliant. I'm going to show you now um, a simple framework that you can use to pull all of the information that's swirling around the room right now into an actual digital marketing plan. Okay. Definitely need a slurp of tea for this, because here we have six steps for you to start to fill in. This is the framework we're going to use. We have to put them in a line and we have to look at them one after the other just to make it understandable. But actually, I want you to think about it. It's more of a circle. We'll go round and round. Um, so when we look at our goals and objectives, we'll look at our business. We'll look at ourselves. OK, we'll look at the budget and the resources we've got. And we'll look at the audience. And when we take those three things into account, that's when we'll decide on the channels we're going to use. All right. Then we'll make the plan of the activity that we're going to do. We'll implement it and we will measure it. That then takes us back round and feeds us back into the loop of how it's going. But actually, when you're coming up with it, it might well feel like a bit of a ball of string because you'll do a bit and you'll have to jump back and, and you'll learn something. So you'll go back and revisit it. OK, so don't be worried if it's not straight through and it's not something that I want you to create the strategy, build your plan and then file it away. And it's not a one time deal. This is something that should be living and breathing and, and moving with you. So here we are going to introduce our friend Max. Max is a hairdresser and has business goals. So your business goals and objectives, what does your business need to achieve? And this is really important that we don't think of our marketing separately from what our business needs to achieve, okay? We should always be using our marketing to support what our business needs, all right? So with our hairdresser, the business goals are to get more customers through the door, sell more things, okay? With a, a hairdresser, there's going to be different strands to that. They're going to be new customers who've never heard from us before and past customers, get those customers coming back, okay? And also to know more people to know they exist. The more people who know who they exist, then they're on that first step to coming down and becoming customers. All right. So, as I say, always your online objectives should be supportive of your business objectives. The kind of objectives you're probably going to come up with. And I think we've seen some of them already. But let Fran know what your business objectives are and how that matches to your online objectives. You might want more traffic to your website. You want, might want to sell more things online. It might be about getting more lead forms in, getting more people to sign up for your customer email because you then know that you'll be able to uh, create your email marketing campaigns and get them coming back for more. It might be about social media, getting your likes and your follows and people knowing about you up. It might be about getting more people out there to just know who you are, your online reach, your online awareness. OK, lots of different things you can do that are all going to have an idea about how you're going to support your business objectives. OK, so the one should align with the other. If your business goal, for instance, is to make more people where you exist, like Max is one of Max's goals was, then actually that would be we could use the increased online reach and awareness to do. All right. If we want to get more returning customers, it might be about increasing the traffic to the website or it might be about getting those sign ups for the email letter. All right. So make sure you are doing things online, spending your time in your digital marketing that's going to help you out as a business. 
Next thing, do a bit of an audit. Think what you've already got. Think about the budget that you have. Think about the resources the time you can afford to give it, the skills you're going to need to give it. For Max right now, doesn't have a website yet. It's too much of an investment. So what can Max do without their own website in order to be found? And actually, there's an awful lot nowadays. Five years ago, I'd have said, you have to have a website. Nowadays, there's a lot you can do to be found using social media, using the Google business profile. Lots of things you can do without having to have your own website. So think about what you already have and what time and skills and budget you've got to spend. Now I want you to think about that audience. Who are the people you're trying to reach? This is where those audience personas will come in. This is where knowing the geography of people, the age and stage and um, whether the gender, what the gender is, that's going to help you out. So for Max wants customers who are female and they need to be local because nobody, well, very few people are gonna travel more than a few miles to get to their hairdressers, okay? Max also knows the most valuable customers are female and above 30 years old. Maybe the youngsters are just coming in for a quick trim, whereas those over 30 year old, maybe they're having the colours done, maybe they're having highlights, maybe they can spend a bit longer and have, you know, uh, hair up or whatever the services they offer. They take more of those services. It's really important if you can identify the most profitable, the most valuable customers to you. Max knows that a lot of Max talks to the customers every single day. So knows that they have children, they work part time and actually useful to know that they also use Facebook. How does he know? He asks them. All right. When he's talking to them, this is the kind of information he's getting. Different marketing channels. When you know what you want to achieve. What you can spend and who you want to reach, that's when you pull down and find out what those channels are going to be of use to you. All right. Different channels work for different objectives. And especially if you're going to be looking at social media, different social media platforms don't just work for different objectives. They work for different demographics, different people as well. So, for example, if I wanted to get more sales on my website, if I'm looking at sales, I can afford to do advertising in a lot of cases. So actually, to increase website sales, I might want to do some search, some search marketing, some search engine optimization optimization and maybe some email marketing. If, however, I wanted to increase customer loyalty once they've already bought from me, get them keeping coming back, then that might be a great time to use my social media, do some email marketing. They know me and trust me and like me. I want them to do more of that. And really some great, interesting content to keep them coming back for more. So different um, channels work for different groups of customers in different scenarios. Okay. Next thing you want to be doing is thinking about planning that activity. All right. So I know I want to reach this particular customer base with these particular tools. Right. Come on. We need to roll up our sleeves and get it done. And that's what this is all about. And I'd be looking if I was doing this, I'd probably be looking at some short term things I can do really quickly to get moving because that always helps. Make a start. Doesn't matter almost in which find a direction, make a start, give it a try, start to learn, start to get some uh, momentum going. So I want my short term goals, I want my medium term, and then I might want my longer term ones. Some of the things, if I decided I did want to build a website, that might take longer. Whereas with shorter term ones, I can get started already straight away. So remember, Max has online objective of reaching more people in the local area and getting more returning customers. Doesn't have a website yet, um, too much of an investment right now. So how's digital going to help Max? First up, Google business profile, get your business listed on search and maps. All right. Next thing, Facebook. They already know that lots of their customers use Facebook. So get out there, get use, get working on there, collect reviews on there, post pictures of customer hairstyles, tag those customers in it. And hopefully the customers will start to spread the word themselves. Might want to use some Facebook advertising. We know people are local. So use Facebook and Restricted by geography, restricted by some of the age and stage demographics that we'd already talked about. Maybe they're going to target local people in the local area with an offer to attract new customers. And if you're doing an offer to attract new customers, don't forget that might be 10 percent off your first appointment. How about saying for my local customers, I'm going to give you a free conditioning treatment next time you book or if you book or here's a card where you can get that 
fifth cut, the fifth treatment, I'll do a free blow dry or something. I wouldn't be giving too much away always for free. I'd be looking at how you can upsell. So try this conditioning treatment or try having a bit of an extended um, time in the chair because then hopefully next time, even when it's not on offer, they might want to do it as well. OK, so I'd always make sure because with Facebook, you won't be able to exclude everybody who's already your customer, for example. So some of your current customers might see it. And if it's a new offer, I want to know as a current customer why I'm not being rewarded in the same sort of way. OK, and how do you measure? How will you know if you if you've succeeded? All right. So measurement is all about um, taking a, a, is. is Measurement's actually how you set up the activity in the first place, so it is measurable. There's a, an old marketing term called SMART objectives. Measure, um, a SMART objective is specific, it's measurable, it's achievable, it's realistic, and it is time-bound. So when you're setting your objectives and goals at the beginning, how are you going to know you've succeeded when you get there? Okay. So rather than just a broad objective of increasing online sales, hard to measure. If you say to increase online sales by 20% within three months, that's quite specific. It's measurable. It's achievable. Who knows? Is it realistic? Is it time bound? Absolutely, because we've put those um, three months in there. If I want to increase brand awareness, very woolly. If I want to increase our brand awareness on Facebook by growing our audience with new people by 40%, we haven't put a time bound on that. So when are you going to do that by? All right. So think about all of your objectives through those stages to make sure that you are coming up with something that is um, robust and make sure you're thinking about, well, what can I measure when I'm doing this? So here's is Max's digital marketing plan. Max doesn't have a website, but wants to reach more people in the local area and get more returning customers. This is what Max's plan looked like. And this is what hopefully by filling in all those areas we've spoken about, yours could look a little bit like this too. So the business goal of reaching more people in the local area and getting more customers through the door. Those people aren't just anybody. The audience is female, um, 39 to 45, based in a geographic area. And also some past customers are an important part of that. They're looking at using local search engine optimization and also Facebook as their channel. The activity is to build that, boost that visibility on Google, build a Google business profile, use Facebook advertising and target people locally to increase online reach and increase returning customers. And hopefully those smart objectives by Facebook page likes from new people by 50 percent within the next month and increase bookings from past customers by 20 percent in the next quarter. All right. And that's there again what it looks like. You want to look at your goals and objectives, your budget and resources, your audience, your channels, your activity, and then make sure you're measuring. And don't just measure it. Go back to the beginning and use what you've learned when you've measured it to improve it and keep improving it as you go. Think in the short, the medium and the longer term. How are you going to make use digital marketing to make your business fly? All right. Unfortunately, I know Franz, Franz been um, uh, answering questions as we go. Um, there's loads of questions coming in. and I know he's been answering as we go. So I'm going to leave it there because we are almost, almost, almost from what I would love you to do. My next task for you is to pop something in the chat and let Fran know what your next steps are. What are you going to do differently as a um, uh, from joining me here today. Think about some of those other webinars. Check out the website. Go and um, see what other webinars are out there that might be your next steps. Um, pulling that plan together and then learning which of the channels are going to help you. It might be re-watching the session again when you've had a, a chance to have a little bit of a cup of tea and a breather. It might be if you're based in the UK and you work for a small business or you work for a charity to sign up for a Google mentoring session, which is at g.co forward slash UK mentoring. Other than that, thank you so much for your time today. It's come sadly to an end. Hope it's been of some use to you. Um, got to wrap up here now, but I mentioned at the session, beginning of the session, if you're interested in more from the Google Digital Garage, check out the website, um, see what other webinars we've got. Face-to-face -face events might be coming to your area. We've got one-to-one -one mentoring. We've got courses. We've got tons of things that are hopefully available to help you. Other than that, thank you 
so much again for joining. Thanks to Fran for being an amazing moderator. We both look forward to welcoming you again to another Google Digital Garage training session sometime soon. Have a lovely rest of your day and a great weekend.